guys. Yes, so I am back. I'm here now today to actually do the conclusion of my starting my healing journey. I started this series like three years ago, so I felt like I needed to actually complete this part of the series. Now, um, in part two, I started all um, talking about doing the research behind eating my OMS protocol or my overcoming multiple sclerosis protocol and finding that way of eating. I talked about speaking to the doctor about that diet. I talked about falling off the wagon as well as uh, how that made me feel. And I kind of left you guys on a cliffhanger. So I'm actually here today to save you from that cliff. <laughs> Now, if you haven't seen part one and two, you can find the links to those videos in the description box below. You can check those out uh, and then you can come back to this video. If you have seen those videos, you will also be able to tell, obviously, my hair is a lot longer now. Um, I used to have a pixie cut in those videos. So it's been a while. Like I said, it's been three years. Part of me was like, maybe I should put my hair up and make it look like, um, like I have a pixie cut again, but nah, I'm not gonna go there. Like I said, I had fallen off the wagon. I was having milk again. I was having lots of processed foods, oils, all the rest, and it was making feel let me feel like crap. I felt like I was spiraling really. I felt like I was losing control of everything and I kind of had given up uh, a little bit on that way of eating because it was so hard not to eat, you know, Oreos or not to eat fake meats. It was really, 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 really difficult. I cannot stress to you enough how awful it made me feel. Yeah, this was this was the winter of 2014. I was short-tempered because um, I obviously I was I wasn't eating my best. I was still taking my medication Avonex, um, and it wasn't I wasn't doing great. Um, my husband decided that right. Um, it's right before Christmas, so this was right before Christmas, like I think about six or seven days before Christmas. He just said, look, we need to go for this meal out with work. Do you wanna come? And I said, yep, absolutely. And I decided that for one night only, because this was an amazing restaurant, like a manor out in the middle of nowhere, I was gonna eat whatever my heart desired, anything, any meat, any pastries, any milk, dairy, whatever I wanted to eat everything. I was not going to put any limitations on this one, one night. I thought, what can one day hurt? Especially because I got there and they said, oh, this is good quality meat. It's been hunted on the grounds of the manor and it's all prepared right there. None of it is made anywhere else. It was all handmade, crafted, awesome food, right? So I thought, what can go wrong? This is this is supposed to be good quality stuff. And it was a good night. We had so much fun. I don't drink anyway, so I didn't drink anything, but I, it was such a good night, such good food. The atmosphere was amazing. We had so much fun with the people that we went out for dinner with. It was great. It was, it was absolutely awesome. However, the day after, not so much. I was lethargic, I was slow, I uh, had no will to do anything. I felt like my old symptoms that would come back now and then with not eating my best, they were back with a vengeance. But most of all, I was really frustrated that I was feeling this way that day because it wasn't that far away from Christmas. We were due to fly out to go visit my parents-in-law in England. So I was just really, really frustrated about it all. It usually takes about a day, a day and a half, something like that to finally feel better again after having eaten badly. So I thought, right, I'll be fine tomorrow. The next day, however, it was worse and I was getting new symptoms. I was getting new areas of numbness over my body. My hands, who, which before had had like more of a tingly numbness, were basically completely gone. I felt like it, I could barely move uh, without every movement feeling like a project that took five seconds for my body to then actually uh, to do. I, my body was not responding to my brain. I could see that this was not a pseudo flare, as some people would call it, when old symptoms kind of come back. Um, this was a new flare. This was a new episode that I was experiencing because I was feeling worse and worse and worse with every hour that passed. It was, it was not great. And I called the doctor because obviously I need to know what to do, whether to come in to see him. And he said, look, there's nothing we can do for you. Um, you, you can come in, that's fine. But what all we're going to do is talk about the fact that you have 
an episode. There's nothing we can do. You basically have to ride this out and then we can book you in for an MRI just to get it down on paper that you are having a new episode. Uh, and then we can discuss new medications and things like that. But we are, there's nothing that we can do for you. Take it easy over Christmas. Don't do anything too much. That's it. So rather than wallow at home, I decided to put Christmas in the hands of my husband, in the hands of my mother and father-in-law, as long as I could get there. If I can get to England, then after, you know, after I get there, I can then kind of relax, even though Christmas is a crazy period. As long as I can get there, everything else will be fine. And so I did. I don't remember much from that trip other than the fact that it was torture. I mean, it was, like I said, with all of the things I was experiencing, you know, just moving, being so hard, getting on a plane, uh, getting all of our luggage, everything like that was was awful. It was, it was pure torture. I got there in the end. We got there in the end. We had an amazing Christmas. I did knuckle down, um, back down onto my OMS, my Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis Protocol. I would eat lots of fish and I would eat lots of veggies and lots of whole foods and, and not lots of oils. I did have, um, at that time I was still eating olive oil and a couple other things, but I, I, I knuckled down completely. And even though I didn't do anything immediately, I did feel like I would do, was doing something, um, anything. I just felt like I needed to do something. And then, um, funny detail, I guess, somewhere between Christmas and New Year's, I decided that I'm going to cut all my hair off. So that is when I went from maybe about this length to a pixie haircut, so really, really short. I felt kind of fed up with it all and I just wanted to get a new start. And I, you know, I'm not one of those people that does things like symbolically, but that is actually what it felt like. It felt like I was doing something symbolically where I, started afresh. I used to be a hairdresser, so I would do all of these things myself. Probably not the best haircut that I've ever done, but I did it. Then, um, the day before New Year's Eve, I get a phone call. I get a phone call from my brother, who he's crying, and I get a phone call that um, obviously was one of the hardest phone calls that I've ever gotten, sorry. Um, and that was, he said, I have some good news and I have some bad news. Um, the good news is that dad is together with my sister in heaven. The bad news is that we're going to miss him. My, my dad was, is one of the most amazing people um, that I know. And that's not just me saying that because he's my dad. He, he truly um, was amazing. But he did suffer from Parkinson's disease for about 10 years. And it was, um, he had a tough tough go of it. Hearing that he was gone was obviously heart-wrenching, but obviously your, your brain goes, what was the last words I said to him? Uh, how did he have a good Christmas? Um, <laughs> uh, there was just a lot of, a lot of obviously thoughts going through your head. Yeah, it was hard and it didn't make it easier that my health was in such a poor state at the time. I came home from England. It was a whirlwind of things going on, obviously life in general, but, but then obviously life, you know, after one of your dear loved ones has passed away. It was it was not easy. Uh, funeral arrangements, processing emotions, uh, all the rest. But I did feel like uh, I needed to control over something. So I dug into research when it came to eating healthy again. I felt like that's one of the top ways to motivate me is to hear all of the smart people out there that know more about diet and health than I do. So I did all this research and I started looking into more and more into whole food plant-based diet where I was previously eating a lot of fish. If I was to remove that as well and remove all oils, not just the bad oils, and I felt that more and more that this was the way, the path to go. Now, I researched every path. I researched paleo. I reached a, researched ketogenic diets. I researched every possible route that I could take. I felt guided um, that this was the route I should take. And so I removed everything. I removed all the fish, all the eggs, all the, obviously the milk, all, all of it. I just felt it couldn't be bad. It couldn't hurt. And sure enough, it didn't. Within two months, I was feeling loads better. Now, I know part of that is just the recovering from a flare-up, and, and that is you you obviously feel better with or from that after, you know, a couple months or, or a few months. They say about six months to recover from a flare-up um, completely. Well, not completely, but mostly. But within about two months, I was better. I was a lot better, and I felt it. It was great. I felt like I was ready to take on 
every issue in my life. I was thriving, like proper thriving. I felt like I could shout from the rooftops how how good I felt and I felt like nothing could stop me now. If you do go and check out my Instagram feed, the MS lifestyle, I'll put a link in the description box for that as well. And you go from the beginning and you kind of scroll up, you will see that I have gone through every different type of plant-based food fad that there has been, right? I have done the juicing thing. I have done a potato week where, well, I think it was even longer than a week where I just ate potatoes. I've done some fasting. I have done a fruit heavy diet. I have done the raw food thing. I have done the raw till four thing. I have done the whole stuff your food with as much, much carbs as you could possibly imagine. I have done every single fad that you could poss possibly imagine when it comes to being plant-based. I mean, you could basically go ketogenic and be plant-based. So there are there's a huge range of different ways of eating when eating plant-based. And then I did most of them except for the ketogenic bit. But the constant through all of those types of food fads was that I was whole food plant-based. So it was whole foods, except for the juicing. The juicing, I don't count that as whole foods because when you juice, you do take away all the fibers from that drink, from the from the actual fruit so or vegetable. So I don't, do not call that whole foods. Apart from that, all of the rest was whole food plant-based. No oil, no fake meats, no processed sugars, no Oreos, because that was like my downfall. I love Oreos <laughs> and technically they're vegan. So, you know, that was hard. <laughs> but I did none of it, none. And that was the constant. All of the food that I ate was good for you. I was getting all my nutrients. I was getting all of my macros. I was getting all the protein I needed. I was getting all the fats I needed. I was getting all the carbs that I needed, all the fuel that I needed. But yeah, so I started that Instagram feed on the 1st of February of 2015, which was basically a month and a half after my flare up. And I felt like I needed something to motiva motivate me. Um, and taking pictures of your food, especially when the pictures end up being relatively pretty and and nice and motivating and all of that. That's what kind of started it all for me. When I started making my videos, I felt like screaming all this from the rooftops. I felt like I needed to get this out. I needed to let you guys know all of the um, amazing things that this diet had done to me. Now, I will get into more as to why I kind of fell off of the YouTube channel. Some would say the face of the earth, but uh, I will tell you more about that in a different video. I've said it before, but it was an amazing uh, journey to actually get to the point where I am today, which is living in the UK. We have a business and we're, we're doing great. So that is basically it. That was the start of my whole healing journey. And I have just gone up from there. I'm, <laughs> I'm still whole food plant-based. I'm still eating um, as good as I can. I can tell. I physically, I'm doing great. This summer when I was running at my most, I was doing about 45, almost 50 kilometers in a week. I'm feeling great. I love life and I love being back. I love talking to you guys again. I love it. So that's my video for today, guys. I hope you guys can feel inspired by my starting of my healing journey and that you can um, start yours. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment as well. And have an awesome day, all you wonderful warriors out there. And I'll, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.